Here we go, boys. You get 500. The two week Keeneland September sale is a little bit like the NFL draft combine. Through the course of this sale, I will truly feel every high and low that I can. You have to wait in line to buy a potentially $2 million horse. So. Oh, hi, Zenyatta. I always say she's like the Beyonce of the thoroughbred world. Yeah, it's called Find Good Horses. <laughs> and don't spend millions of dollars. When a horse wins the Breeders' Cup Classic, he puts his name on a list of all-time greats. It's that an owner and a trainer can look at that trophy and can say, I won one of the most prestigious races in the world. There's also value in the breeding shed, which can escalate dramatically once a horse wins a race like the Classic. It really gets the attention of breeders, not just in the United States, but around the world. We're at the Keeneland September yearling sale. There's a lot of different consigners that will sell horses at these sales. You have the biggest consigners, Claiborne, Denali, Lane's End, Taylor Made. They catalog 4,000 yearlings every year. About 3,000 of them are sold. There's about 20,000 horses born a year. Only one is a Breeders' Cup Classic winner. People here are buying the dream. There's only one horse every year that can earn that $6 million purse, but more importantly, that creates the stud value that could be worth tens of millions of dollars. Nobody really knows what's the makeup of the next great stallion. So we're searching for it. It's like a needle in a haystack. We're both a buyer and a seller, or the bloodstock agent. And so uh, pretty much I'm a one-stop shop in terms of the work that we do at Bloom Racing. Morning. Good, yourself? You hear that saying, I got to find the diamond in the rough. But a much better analogy, really, is trying to find that diamond in the diamond. Because if you think about it, these beautiful thoroughbreds are all diamonds. And so um, finding that diamond that fits my budget, that, that's the trick to all of this. And you're out there looking at thousands of horses doing it. Hey, Mark, how you doing? I'm a lone wolf. I've always worked that way. I kind of do my own thing. I have a crazy methodology that works for me. I start out with a really good organized set of criteria and I have a strategy in place. That's great, thank you. You have to wait in line to buy a potentially $2 million horse. So uh, it's kind of a good market to be in when people are waiting in line begging to pay a lot of money for what you have. So one of the coolest things that happens when you come to one of these sales, if you've been fortunate enough to be successful with one of the offspring from a consigner, like in other words, Midnight Bizu, our star of the barn, was bred and sold by Woodford, and front and center is my filly. It's a fun thing to walk up and see your silks, and more importantly, see the horse. It's a Cinderella story for Midnight Bizu. As a yearling, we get lucky. We buy her for $80,000. She's now currently undefeated on the season. It would be an incredible success story and perfect way to cap off an exceptional season for our filly by taking down the Breeders' Cup Distaff. So typically when I'm looking at a horse, I'll, I'll start from the bottom up and work my way there, start at the feet and just take a general look at the entire body of the horse. And then if I decide I like the horse, I start getting into more detail but the one component that's probably the most important factor is a horse's desire, a horse's heart, um, a horse's personality, their presence. You watch for subtle nuances, for hints, and you hope you're right. The two-week Keeneland September sale is a little bit like the NFL Draft Combine. There's multiple rounds in the NFL Draft, six, seven, eight rounds. In Keeneland, there's five, six, seven books. Book one of Keeneland September. These are the best-bred, best-looking, very much like 
the first round of the NFL draft, the best athletes. So those athletes would generally cost the most to sign. Our athletes would cost the most to buy. Everybody's looking for an edge. Everybody's looking to try to measure something that we can't see. And everybody believes their team's the best. And unfortunately, this game is so difficult for a lot of different factors that you can't control. I'm gonna come around and then I'll just come and I'll stop here and then I'll say something like, welcome to Kentucky. Oh, hey there, welcome to Lexington. I'm gonna take you on a tour today of some, ble oh my God. Well, hey there, Carson Kressley here and I just wanna welcome you to Lexington, Kentucky. Today I'm gonna to take you on a trip to meet some Breeders' Cup Classic royalty. Follow me. We're gonna go kind of uh, behind the scenes and see where some of these amazing racehorses live, where they grew up. Um, it's like the E! True Hollywood story uh, without the car crash. I like to think of myself as a horseman. I've been doing this since I was a, a child, literally. The type of horses that I have, which are American Saddlebred show horses, which are actually really closely related to thoroughbreds. I love horse racing because it combines everything that I love. Horses, amazing, beautiful. Fashion, I mean hats and ties with jockeys on them. And then the third thing I love is bourbon. We are actually um, headed to Lane's End, which I've never really gone behind the scenes of a major thoroughbred farm, so it's pretty exciting stuff. So, this is a real treat, so thank you so much. Oh, not oh, at all. Maybe I should not walk on the grass. That's probably bad. <laughs> it's probably fancy here. Um, we'll just go, now who are we seeing today? We're seeing Accelerate today. Okay. And Accelerate won the Breeders' Cup Classic. And he won just last year, right? He did, yeah. They're coming to the wire, and Accelerate wins the Breeders' Cup Classic for John Sandler. For him, when he won the Breeders' Cup Classic, that really set him apart from, from the other horses of his generation and stamped him as a great racehorse. Right. So the Breeders' Cup has a tremendous influence on, on breeding going forward. If he's successful, he could breed way, well into his 20s. So. Okay. And now he just um, gets to live here in the lap now of luxury at Lane's End. Exactly. He had uh, uh, about 165 wives last year, which, okay. is, which, are, which he enjoyed He gets very around. Much. He does get around. And they all come here. They do. They all come here to him. They come for the day. Yeah, exactly. They and have then they little... have their adult time. Yes, they don't even get a they full day. Home. They don't even. That's yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> it's not fair, is it? You'd think they'd at least have a drink or something. Yeah, you'd think, but they're in and out pretty quickly. He'll have foals next year, and then in 2021, he'll actually have yearlings at the yearling sales, which we're going through at the moment. And okay. So it's very exciting to watch the progression of the babies being born and then ultimately growing up to be yearlings. And then you have the yearling buyers coming in, trying to find the next Breeders' Cup Classic winner. Right, so. I love it. I don't want to leave. This is like heaven <laughs> on earth, my goodness. Well, you're going to go see Zenyatta, so that's going to be I even, know. Even more fun. Hello, hello, hello. There she is. Hi. Oh, hi, Zenyatta. Oh my God, she, it's like she knows me. Amazing, I brought her candy. Can she have oh, candy? Oh, absolutely. She uh -oh. loves peppermint. She is gigantic. She is, she's 17 what? too. Hello, hello. Oh, yeah, see? She's like an SUV. <laughs> I mean, she is sturdy she's and the Range Rover. solid. She is a Range Rover. <laughs> You're a good Look girl. at you, mama. How old is she now? She is 15 this year. She wow. was born she in looks, 2004. She looks great, and in horse years, like, it's usually like, I think like four years to every one year or something. She's like in her 40s. She's like a real housewife. Were you at the Breeders' Cup when she won? No, I wasn't. Oh, but you've seen the video. Oh, absolutely. Still get goosebumps. And <laughs> she is just, you know, she was in the back of the pack. This is unbelievable. And then she's just like, um, this is not happening this way. <laughs> and she rallies and she beat all the boys. She did. And it was epic and you slayed and you're amazing. Right, she's a superstar. She is a superstar. I always say she's like the Beyonce of the thoroughbred world. That is a very good uh, comparison. Do they ever get ridden? No, no, no none of our broodmares are ridden. It would be tempting though, wouldn't it? Okay, bye, Zenyatta. Okay, 
Stay in touch. Send me a message on Instagram. I follow you. It's like an organizational philosophy that you guys... Yeah, it's called find good horses. <laughs> and don't spend millions of dollars. Right. Just go inside and sit down. Our good luck's mine. What we do is horse syndicates. So rather than own 100% of something, you own 5%. You spread your risk. And with that, you have more chances for success. And that's, that's really important. We sell a dream. We sell an experience. Well, let's go win a grade one. Come on, come meet the jockey. We've taken it to the everyman. We have so many different people in our partnerships from all walks of life, lawyers, plumbers, doctors, uh, tax accountants. When they come to the races, they have one common thing, and that's their horse that they own. One of the first horses we ever bought was a horse named Singletary, who ended up winning the 2004 Breeders' Cup Mile. Cut to video of him winning the mile, please. Singletary wins it. A perfect ride there for Singletary. There's been great horses purchased here for $15,000. If you just get lucky and find that one special horse, it can change your life. I think she's kissing me. I think she likes my beard. We have over 500 uh, partners, clients, friends. Uh, what else do we do? Can I talk now? Yeah. Well, I was just rolling. I was <laughs> ranting. You were good. It was very good. Thank you. When we meet people for the first time, they have no idea what to do or how to get in. So the barrier to entry is, is big. But companies like ours help bridge that. So you can come in and you can really just buy any type of a racehorse uh, at any level um, and just dip your toe in to see what kind of experience that you like. So you come in with great expectations. You do all your work. You budget 100000 and then it sells for 275. So you know what that's called? Not being close. So now we are on our way to Three Chimneys. Three Chimneys is the home of Gunrunner, and he won the Breeders' Cup, so he is a very famous horse as well. We're just hitting up all the popular stallions today, and they live like rock stars. I mean, they have a beautiful uh, house that they live in. They get to um, run around all these gorgeous bluegrass fields, and then they have like 150 girlfriends. I mean, where do they get the energy? We are here. Uh, okay, there's Gunrunner. Yeah, are you basically his his primary caretaker? No, I am the stallion manager. Okay. So Sounds like a good job. I'd like to be a stallion manager, Sandy. <laughs> it's been a great job, yes. Yeah. For a long time. Maybe so we can share some tips yeah, later. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and then, so when it's time for him to do his job, then he comes up, you take him right over here? You take him right in there. The mares will be waiting for him in there when we have um, huh. in the breeding shed. It's just like that movie with Dolly Parton and Burt Reynolds. <laughs> Well, almost. <laughs> this is a gorgeous breeding shed. I don't think I've been in a breeding shed before, but this is really nice. And it has spongy flooring. Yeah. Oh yeah, Safe, safety first. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. get this from my um, house. <laughs> what is that? It's a, basically a breast bar when, okay. when the, in, in the act of breeding, right. sometimes the mare gets pushed forward the by mare the stallion. Is here. And this way she can hang her head up here and be right. comfortable while right. her, her chest is hitting against the breast bar there. Like and this is a flat board. platform here. If right. the stallion and the mare of a similar size, mm -hmm. there's a little bit of a depressed one there. So if the mare is bigger or taller than right. the stallion, you put her in a little bit of a lower spot. So, so the mechanics are a little So better, the stallion you know doesn't get a complex. Yeah. So there's about 170 little gun runners running around this year. Yeah, they're all six or eight months old. When will they start racing, when they're two? They'll start racing in 2021, as okay. two-year-olds two in 2021. Great. Yeah. Okay, we just have to wait around. <laughs> yeah. We should probably have a martini or something till then. <laughs> Lexington is a very charming city. There's a lot of amazing restaurants. When I'm in town for anything horse-related, I always try to go to Dudley's, so we're going to Dudley's. Hello, hello. Hi, Hi how are you? I'm Carson. Good to meet you, Mark. Mark, you? nice yeah, to meet pleasure. you, thank you. The hot brown, obviously, is the quintessential Kentucky culinary delight. It is. So I thought maybe you could tell us what it is and show us how to make one. Where did the hot brown come from? And it's like a Lexington thing, right? It's actually from Louisville, the Brown Hotel in Louisville. That's okay. Louisville. Yeah, I've only ever seen a hot brown in Kentucky, either in Lexington or Louisville. So yeah. I feel like we're 
making a real Kentucky oh. uh, treat that nobody else in the world gets to have. Yeah, this is this is special. Grilled right. country, country ham, ham and, and turkey. So now we're getting healthy with yeah. tomato now slices. Our vegetables. Put a little of the Mornay on top, and now we're going to toast it to really oh. get this all golden brown. So we're going to broil it all. Yeah. And then if the cheese wasn't enough, we're going to garnish with just a little bacon. Some bacon. We'll just put a little salad on there just to make sure. It's important to get your we greens. Got, we have our vegetables and we got our salad. Coming through, hot brown. Anyone order the hot brown? My friend Zenyatta's on the wall. I know her. And there's bourbon. Delicious. Come on, Mike, 210, 210, Roger, 225, at 220, 25, 35, at 30. With this sale, you can buy a yearling from $1,500 to multi-million dollars. It's unknown what the sales topper is going to be this year, but you can figure somewhere between two and four million dollars. Obviously, this week is high risk and high reward. The one difference between us and a typical owner is we have a budget, and we want to present horses <laughs> at, a no cert <laughs> at a certain price point to our partners. <laughs> but we're up against other owners that have a little bit more disposable income than us, don't look at it as a business model the way that we do. What a bargain. That's my favorite thing when they say, what a bargain. Oh, really? This horse is actually more valuable than some countries. Should we get in? So that they can come back for four million one hundred thousand on a beautiful bull out of Bounty by Lombro. Now let's give a round of applause. Who are we clapping for? Ah, this is fun. <laughs> this is what fun. It? It's fun and exciting, and you kind of get into it. You don't know who's bidding. Uh, you have an idea. Here comes Sheik Mo. He probably got it. Sheik Mo, how are you? So that's my buddy Sheik Mo. Probably bought that horse. Yeah, I think he remembered you. For he did. Time. He did look like yeah. he remembered me. Did you see him like, acknowledge hey, me? Hey, he was like, hey, that's hey, that guy that's who came guy. up and introduced himself. He's telling his bodyguards right yeah, now. He's telling him, please get that guy away from me. Here we go, boys. You get 500. Hey, you get 5, you get 130, you get 40, you get 100, 300, down to the Auctions are interesting in that it's certainly belly to belly commerce. We sell maybe 42 horses an hour. Down to get him to get him four, down five. Eight, four hundred, down five million. I got a million to start. You work for two years, and I've got 50 seconds to sell your product. Three, but to get four, down to get him five, but a million five. I am the ringman here at Keeneland. When they lead those horses into us, they have so much on their mind, and they're looking for a friend, so. That happens to be me. Four million six, down seven. And they're getting to get in seven. Well, it's not me being against you. It's just four million eight. At seven eight. And they're getting four million eight. And they're getting to get I promise you that. At four million seven, four million eight. And they're getting to get eight here. The trade secret that I don't like to tell, but I will, is we wear the black gloves. And so many times you can just kind of let him smell that glove and he'll change his mind. He'll kind of follow you around. Eight million two is right up here. Eight million three back there. What do you say? Eight million three. Are they thinking about it? Some say yes, that it's kind of that horse whisperer thing, but you know, it's just from a lifelong love of doing this. Right here. Eight million two hundred thousand. Thank you, folks. Hold your applause just real quick. Hold your applause real quick. Let's get her outside first. Through the course of this sale, I will truly feel every high and low that I can and everything in between. There's a lot of excitement about who's going to buy my horse. How are you? Good, good. You had a nice night. Thank you very much. There was Bob Baffert, Sheikh Mohammed, the ruler of Dubai, having last glimpses at the horses that are just about to sail. And you don't know if they're on your horse or off your horse. Yeah, like it was cold. He's a nice cold. He's a nice cold. try and help you, but I don't think we can help you now. Hopefully somebody will keep on bidding, right? At the Keeneland sale, we'll sell 20 yearlings in total, and, and we'd be a small to medium-sized outfit selling our own horses. Oh, there we are. Guess I'll go stand with my horse. $2.99 reserve, anything above that, sold. Hip number 405, consigned by Ashview Farm. Brian and Gray Lister, age of the Bay Colt by Kentucky Derby winner, Nyquist. Oh my, who could 500? 500 D in the ring, 500 D, 3 3 in the ring, 3 Honestly, I feel pretty worn down and beat up. At 2 now, 25, put them at 25, where 25, dude. 25. Your body's tired from being out here all day. Your mind is exhausted. Your emotions are shot. All right, we've got two bidders now. Keep on hitting it here, buddy. Keep on going. And then in the next minute and a half, you kind of figure out how your year is going to go. 425, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50,
Junior looks like a runner. 75, 5, 4, 5, 25. Who was that? 5, 25. 5, 25. 5, 25. 50, 50. You're going to get a 50. We're fine. 25, 50. Let's keep on going. 50, 50. Now, 25, last couple. 55, 50, 50, 50, 50. We're fine. 55, 50. And I have right. Mitchell. 550,000. Thank you. There we go. That's what we needed. Uh, Ryan did a nice job selling there. Cross it this summer. Ugh. Take a deep breath now. That was a great sale. Well, we just sold our Nyquist Colt for $550,000 to a client and friend, Pete Bradley. That was just a big poker game there, trying to, I don't have much to spend. Da, da, da. I didn't have much to spend, but uh, I spent more than I was supposed to. <laughs> Thanks. Congrats and thank you. <laughs> what a horse that guy. Yeah. And what a star up top. We're all really excited. And now we're going to do this for 12 or 13 more days. <laughs> yeah. It's a competitive market here. You know you're bidding against some very powerful people. People are paying $8 million for a yearling. Those same buyers are looking at a lot of the horses I'm looking at. It's kind of worth that. At the end of the day, I got my butt kicked all day long. It's easy to get dejected, especially in the moment. You feel like, I'm never going to be able to buy the horse that I want. But you got to stay disciplined and stay the course. One way or another, it always works out. Next on All In, The Road to the Classic. Five weeks away from the Breeders' Cup Classic. The best race in the United States is here. The atmosphere, the horses. We have six horses in the awesome again. There's one heavy favorite, McKenzie, trained by Bob Baffert. I forgot to tell you, she bites people in the <laughs> face. It would be incredible to finish off as undefeated, and I try not to think about that right now. There they go. 